30 time with the Cardinals. They, of course, are going to be very interesting to keep an eye on there as far as the NL Central is concerned. They finish with the Phillies and the Nationals uh, by the end of April. They play in four series. That's interesting as well. John Mazelak runs the ball club, and he says hello. John, always a pleasure. Welcome here. And um, it is interesting with your schedule. Good to get back into sport, getting through spring training. Give me a little synopsis of where you guys sit here on this eighth day of March. Go ahead. Let me hear. Well, well, yeah, I would imagine we're like every club. We're just trying to remain healthy and and ultimately uh, – um, getting our work in as best we can. Obviously, the South Florida teams have a unique schedule where we play four, then off on the fifth. Um, and, and so that's been a little bit of adjustment. And so we're trying to stuff in a handful of uh, B games just to make sure we get the innings that are required as we start to think about April. But, you know, overall, the vibe here in this camp has been very positive. We're uh, excited that we're playing baseball. And, um, you know, I think overall feel pretty good about getting this season underway. And I would think, too, with Arenado, a, a nice uh, pump up there. People are into it. He can't wait to, you know, start his year. Uh, I'm sure you love what you see, both defensively and offensively. Great cornerstones with him and Goach. Making me some early impressions on your third baseman. Go ahead. Well, obviously, we don't make this deal if we don't think he's an elite player. And, and uh, you know, having him on this club, to your point, uh, you know, really sort of solidifies our, our infield. And, you know, this deal wasn't made in a vacuum. In other words, you know, it was it was a long term play. We, we think he's someone that, um, you know, obviously can be an anchor to this club for uh, many, many years. And, you know, I think overall first impressions of him is, is that he's enjoying being a part of the Cardinals and, um, you know, getting to know his teammates and, and making new friends. And from that standpoint, I think it's, we've gotten off to uh, the right foot. And, of course, when you uh, run this ball club, you get a big advantage, don't you, John? The St. Louis winning culture, 11 championships, you know, good ballpark, wonderful baseball town, you know, mutual pool holes. I mean, there's a lot to sell if you're running the Cardinals to a guy like Arenado, correct? Yeah, obviously it was unique, right, because it's a trade, and, and so it's not like the, the normal maybe like free agent market where you're we're having to do a little bit more recruiting and selling, but – yeah, I, I would hope St. Louis is an attractive place to play, um, not only from the, the history of what this organization has been able to do, but really just sort of the current club we have. Um, there's a lot to be excited about. We, we, we really feel like we have a nice balance of, of veteran talent as well as young players starting to emerge. And we also feel like when you look at our, our minor league system, we've got a lot of depth and a lot of players that um, I think will ultimately become household names as we uh, progress through the years. All right, let's uh, do a couple of things. A lot of guys in the outfield, and let's break down that starting staff. Let's do the outfield first, uh, John. You got a lot of guys out there. You got the young kid of Carlson, of course. Uh, you know, you got you got the, the center fielder who can uh, uh, Harrison Baden, you no know Fowler. Give me a little rundown how this uh, outfield is going to work itself out here the next three or four weeks before opening day. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I have a crystal ball, but I think it's a bit premature to. Um start saying, you know, speaking in absolutes, but obviously we feel like we have an elite defensive outfield with O'Neill winning a gold glove last year. We think Bader, someone that will be in that conversation moving forward. And Dylan Carlson, um, obviously last year made a, a very good impression on, on this game. And then we also have guys like Lane Thomas, who, you know, he was really slowed last year by COVID and, and when, how he ended the year in, in 19 prior to the injury, he was someone that was starting to make an impact on our club. So we have a lot of uh, high hopes for him. And then Justin Williams from the left side, I think can give you some pop. And then Austin Dean is, is someone that's competing for some time as well. So, you know, overall, we feel pretty good about that outfield. And, you know, the, I think the key to the success of that outfield is going to be determined in terms of what type of offensive production we get out of that group, because we certainly know from a defensive standpoint, they can get that job done. All right, a uh, little pop. Uh, Arenado adds plenty. That's important. You know, last year he hit the fewest home runs, um, uh, at least in the National League. And, you know, listen, we know Arenado has got great power, so that's going to help. Uh, is that an important aspect here as far as the year is concerned? You, you like to hit the ball out of the ballpark with the way the game's going, John? You feel that you can find some offense outside of the first and third base spots as far as the, long, as far as the long ball goes? Let me hear well, I think when you look at our offense, um, you know, expectations with having somebody like Paul DeYoung, uh, Tyler O'Neill, Harrison Bader, and even Dylan Carlson is where you're hoping you're going to see that that uptick in, in power. 
Um, you know, guys like Goldie and, and Arenado have a history of doing what they're doing, but you know, clearly you don't want an offense to to solely ride on one or two players. So, you know, we're going to be the sum of our parts, and the key to to the our offensive success is going to be, you know, who's contributing in that lineup day to day. I uh, Flaherty, who was great two years ago, uh, was wonderful in the postseason. We uh, looked like a big time pitcher. Uh, you tell me a little step back uh, last year, uh, not great in that postseason game against San Diego. you like to get him back to elite ace form. He's got that kind of potential. That would go a long way. Thoughts there? Well, I echo that. Um, you know, I, I think trying to, like, judge what you saw last year is really difficult, especially given the scenario that this organization or this team went through. But, you know, he has top of rotation stuff. And, um, you know, obviously a lot of our success hinges on how well he pitches. But, you know, we feel like we have a lot of depth in this rotation right now. Um, hopefully it's not tested early in the sense that we can get everybody um, going and contributing. Obviously we're one week into camp, so it's, it's a little hard to draw any conclusions on exactly what it's going to look like. But, you know, we feel pretty confident going into 2021 that we, we definitely have the guys that can give us innings and uh, create a lot of success for us. And you got your closer back. I'm assuming he's going to pick up where he left off. Give me some thoughts there. Jordan Hicks is someone that um, obviously coming back from Tommy John that we want to make sure that we treat with, with kid gloves early on and, and, and make sure we put him in a position not only to be successful, but to be healthy. And, and so um, I do feel like when you look at our bullpen and you realize some of the depth that we have in it, we should be able to protect him, not have to overuse him, and um, allow him to be a key contributor as we move forward. All right, listen, division is interesting. I mean, you know, the Brewers made some late moves. The Cubs even got a little more active. Uh, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, we're not so sure about. Everybody is going to knock this NL Central. You know, 86 wins wins it. Worst division in the sport. Uh, you know, do that. Buyer beware on that. You know how these divisions go. Things change. Milwaukee's made some good moves. You get Aaron Otto in. I don't sell the Cubs entirely short. This division will still be pretty competitive. Maybe not the Pirates, but this division from Cincinnati forward, John, I would think, still be pretty competitive in 2021. Yeah, I would think so. And, you know, this is why we play the game, right? Um, you know, we can sit here and guess and, and make predictions, but the fact is, is we're going to play 162 and we'll find out. But, um, you know, clearly when you look at what happened on the um, Eastern Division and what happened uh, out West, and clearly the Dodgers are reigning World Series champions. There, there's obviously a reason why this division is getting knocked a little bit. But you know what? Um, in the end, we're going to play and we'll find out. But uh, we're certainly excited about what we have. And we also recognize that the, the, the teams you mentioned in our division aren't just going to lay down and, and uh, let us win. So we expect competition and, you know, we actually think it'll be a fun summer. And last thing, John, I know the Cubs, uh, the, the mayor of Chicago just said Cubs and White Sox can have 20 percent capacity uh, on opening day, which puts at least eight, nine thousand people at Wrigley and uh, the White Sox Park. Has the has St. Louis, the governor. Uh, what's the story as far as fans go for you on April 1st? Are you going to have some? Give me some thoughts there. Yeah, we're hoping for right around 32 percent. So um, we're excited about that. Um, I believe the mayor signed off on that. And uh, I think la earlier last week we had our announcement. So, yeah, we're looking forward to having fans in the, in the stadium. And, um, you know, that number should make some real noise and that'll be fun.